first event of the night. It is the Sports Series. 12 laps the distance. Here's the show. Driving the number 13, the Weld Yacht Services. Number 13, a brand new sponsor on him this week for Jeff Charlin. To the outside, number 07 is Dave Charest out of Westbrook. Number 34, Dana Gagnon lines up from the inside of row number two. To the outside, the number 21 is Dave Lamperin. 88 is Andy Field. To the outside of him, the number 68 is Rusty Shaw. 35, last year's Wildcat champion is Bobby Nato. To the outside, it's Russell Morrison, the number 63. 57 with a win this season, Ron Smith out of Hollis. To the outside, Side. The number 20 is Frank Ware. The Budweiser number 60 of Scott Dorr goes next. And the number 14 rounds out the running order. This is rookie Travis Buzzle out of Hollis. On the starter stand, Junior Niles. And with the flags in hand, Eddie Walsh looks the field over and sets them uh, on their way. Green flag is out. We are racing. Field bolts out of turn number two, 13, Jeff Charlin down the back straight away inherits the top spot. Dana Gagnon tries to follow along in second. Gagnon finds the inside line to his liking, 34, wants more, wants the lead in turn one, but Charlin shuts him down. 0-7 of Charest in danger of losing a lot of positions on the high side. This track all about momentum, and once you lose it, you're going to the back in a hurry. Andy Field, wheel to wheel off a of turn four. It's Field, give him third. Bobby Nato needs a good run. I believe this team still searching for their first top three of the season. Number 35 moves to fourth in the qualifier. 63, Russ Morse lines up side by side with Shires as he continues to backpedal. Meanwhile, up in front, the inside line has been taken away from Jeff Charlin. Give the lead to Dana Gagnon down the back stretch. 34 to the lead. Meanwhile, Bobby Nato wrestles the bottom groove away from Andy Field, and they'll go side by side for spot three at the line. Three wide action for the run back. Frank Ware and Dave Lamprin make minor contact. Both drivers straighten it out as we continue with Russ Morse, the 63 on pit road. Morris, who comes into this race as one of the fastest drivers in this division in the last three or four races. He's really caught fire, and hopefully not literally as he hit the pits. 34, Dana Gagnon continues to lead this one. Gagnon with a heap of heat wins this year. Cross fly to the air, six down, six to go. Jeff Charlin second. Andy Field doing a great job of hanging on the outside. Thought for a moment, or at least for a many moments, that Bobby Nato would wrestle the inside line away and then overtake him. But Field has been very stout on the outside groove. Number 88 wants to hang on to third, but has thoughts of going to second. We bring up the momentum factor, and with the new track compound, Andy Field finds it to his liking, runs the outside. That's the most we've seen Andy Field run up, run up on top this year. Bobby Nato has thoughts of three wide in the turn number one, but Charlotte shuts them both down. Andy Field gets a run in turn number two. Field down the back stretch, protects third, but goes after spot number two. Laps winding down, just three to go when they hit the start finish line this time. It's all Dana Gagnon, but look at that battle for second. Young Andy Field, second generation driver. Two by two as they cross the start-finish line this time. Second spot still up for grabs, and here comes Frank Ware. Ware in the glassmith number 20 makes a bold move from the outside to the inside to overtake Bobby Nitto, and he wants three wide down the back stretch, but gathers it back up, thinks twice about it, and goes to the inside of Andy Field. White flag out, one to go, and here comes Ware. Frank Ware, who is charged from the outside of row number four to move up inside the top five, give him third down the back stretch. Andy Field still hangs tough. Checkered flag in the air. It's going to be Dana Gagnon. Who will get second? Jeff Charlin gets it. Frank Ware third, Andy Field fourth. Bobby Nato, Ron Smith, Scott Dorr, Bill Dixon.
Dave Charest, Jim Cooper, Dave Lampert, and Travis Buzzle round out the running order in qualifier number one. Clyde Hennessy, Beaver Norton. The number two is Robert Emery, Sally Girardi in the 77. Then it's the number 16 for Donnie Colbert, Chris Smith to the outside, Donnie Morse. And the number 19 rounds out the running order. Off of turn number four, green flag is in the air and we're racing. Opening day feature winner, Brian McClure completes the field in the number 19. Down the back straightaway, back up to the lead. A couple of shiny cars battling for the top spot. Dan Wink down low and Laramie up on top. One lap complete. One of the most competitive divisions in all of local short track racing, the Sports Series. And side by side, Jason Larrabee when Larrabee, here's an interesting stat, when Larrabee has been in the lead this year, he has not been passed. And we're not talking about competition on the racetrack from week in to week out. When Jason Larrabee takes over spot number one, not one driver in this division has been able to move by him. That's an interesting stat and a, really a testament to what the 2017 team has put together this year. Continues to be Larrabee down the back straightaway in second. Nate Levitt runs in third. Number five, Chris Warming runs in the top four as well. A flashback to last Saturday. The 27 and the 36 finish 1-2 on the racetrack. The difference with the feature race is that Larrabee, as I mentioned, will start at the tail, and Nate Levitt will probably start a few positions ahead of him, quite a few, as, uh, let's see, the number 36 comes into this race, knocking on the door of a top 10 run, only four points behind 10th place Dan Wink. And when championships are won and lost by single points, of course, the uh, feature races award the most amount of points, but qualifying or it has been uh, shown year in, year out. That championships are won and lost in the qualifier. Very important to finish well. 53, Dan Wick continues to lead this race. 27, Larrabee follows along in second. If you're making tonight an annual trip, Here's what uh, happened last year. Remember, the top 11 would go to the feature, and then we'd run a consolation race. That is not the case this year. There will not be a Sports Series Consi. One of the different rules to 2006. Every driver will make this race as we look towards the 35-lap feature event later on tonight. Talk about championships being won and lost by single points. Dan Wink knows what that is all about. Wink won the 2003 Wildcat Championship by just one point. Championship went down to the final turn of the final corner and Wink came out on top. And interesting to note in that race, Wink was battling in a pack of cars featuring drivers he was battling for the championship with. 53, 27, and 36 have struck it out now. Top three as they go back to turn number one. White flag out. Wink and Larrabee have pulled away nicely from Dan, uh, from Nate Levitt. Then there's Chris Warming and Reggie Lehman in the number 71. Mike Landry right at his bumper but won't get by the reg. Checkered flag out, 53, 27, 36, 5, and 71, your top five. Then it's Mike Landry, Claude Hennessy, Sally Girardi. I believe Beaver Norton was next. Lower point, Bill Dodge Auto Group Pro Series drivers looking for a start. Let's see if they can make it stick this time. Off of turn number four, green flag is in the air, and Jackie Roussel takes off. 79 and Keith McKinnon left to battle side by side with Josh Cantera down the back stretch. Seven of Kirk Gary right there and Steve Berry in the low point. That's kind of uncharacteristic for the 15. Had a rough couple of weeks and tried to get back in the high point. He coming into this race. Berry still in the top 10 in points. But as things shake out, sits at the back of the low point. He two laps down and Jackie Roussel shows the way. Three wide on the front straightaway. Kirk Gary muscles his way to spot number two, the seven down the back stretch, and look who has followed him. No 
surprise there. Steve Barry rides in third spot. Barry, the only driver in Beach Ridge history to win four track championships in four different divisions. He's won in everything he's run, and he goes to the low side of the seven of Kurt Gary. The Gorham Sand and Gravel, number 15, to the bottom side and successful. Makes the clean pass on Gary, and their single file again as they go into turn number three. Can Barry catch Jackie Roussel? Talk to Jackie's father and crew chief, Charlie Roussel of Pitt Road before the race tonight. And uh, he, again, threw a completely different setup in the car. They have done this the past month or so with very success. And after uh, coming up two sixth place finishes back on the 4th of July weekend, that's where they found the most success. That's the setup they have in the car tonight, the car uh, from the 4th of July weekend. Roussel with a fast race car tonight, but will it be fast enough to hold off Steve Barry? I don't think so. Barry up on the wheel. Turn number three. Steve side by side. Jackie breaks loose and they'll rub up a turn number four. Give the spot to Steve Barry in turn number one. Steve cannot shake Jackie Roussel though and down the back straightaway. 15 can't close the deal. Finally does in turn number three. Jackie Roussel right there, followed by Kurt Gary, then it's Josh Cantera, Steve Jones, Gary Groves, and Keith McKinnon. Single file, and now Kurt Gary goes after Jackie Roussel. Two laps to go this time. 15, Steve Barry, two laps away from a qualifying win. The race is for second. Kurt Gary, who averages one or two feature wins a season here at the racetrack. A solid long-time competitor going against the driver who's just been solid. Jackie Roussel has been at it about as long as Kurt Gary has. One flag out, one to go. I'm not sure if Kurt actually thought that was the checkered flag because he backed out of it big time on the front straightaway last time and jumped back in behind the number 10. Checkered flag out is going to be Steve Barry. Number 10, Jackie Roussel second. And creeping across the start-finish line, something to look at, the 7 of Kurt Gary. Had problems on the start-finish line uh, on the white flag lap and slow again. Just kind of coasted to a top three finish. Inside row number four, current point leader number 40, the naughty 40, is Dan McKagan starting to the outside. Welcome home, Alan Tardiff in the number eight. Field brings it up to speed. Green flag is in the air, and we are racing. Field shoots through turns number one and two. Steve Carrier easily takes over the top spot, but a side-by-side -side battle for a second. Bob Cahan will push his nose to the front of that battle, but here comes Bob Billadu on the inside. Another one of those full speed pace laps we see quite often in the Bill Dodge Auto Group Pro Series, and they continue that formation in turn number three. It's Bob Billadu breaking it loose a little bit in turn four. Nothing major, though. Uh, didn't break really out of shape, just bobbled it, but you can see him saw the wheel off of turn number four. That's 30 years of racing experience versus 37. And when you throw Bobby Babb in there, let's uh, try to add that up. Babb's in his 27th season, Bill Dew in his 30th, and Gahan in his 37th. Wow. A lot of racing history between those three drivers. The nine, the four, and the 50 single file out the corner. One driver to watch, and we talk about championships being won and lost in qualifying. Look at the naughty fighting for Dan McKeck from the back of the pack and moving up a couple of spots, and, and more importantly, a couple of cars ahead of Trevor Sanborn. Remember, the 40 comes into this lead, or comes into this night with a seven-point advantage over the 29. If he can pick up a few points here, a few points there, just padding his lead. Again, he's not the only driver that, that McKegg has to worry about. The other drivers he has to worry about are uh, in front of him. Bobby Babb and Billy Rogers. Well, he's now he's, got by, he's past Billy Rogers in the 53, so has to worry about Babb now in the number four. Again, the top four, 17 points apart coming into this night. It's all Steve Carrier. Carrier's actually struggled the past couple of weeks. 
came out of the gate very fast in 2006, picking up a couple of wins real quick. And it's not like he, I think, has uh, has dropped off more. It's just the other drivers have picked up. And uh, his finishes have suffered as a result. Steve Carrier trying to get his season back on track, finish-wise. Off a of turn number four, he leads the pack. And now Bobby Babb closing in on spot number two is Alan Tarnoff with problems. And Tarnoff's just out to, in a uh, testing session. Not sure if that's his uh, past car or not, but number eight hits pit road. 83, Steve Carrier still your leader. Two to go. And now Trevor Sanborn. Sanborn coming to live on the high side, even though it's a battle further on back in the pack. Point implications between the 50, excuse me, the 40, the 29, and the 53. Those are three of your top four drivers in the championship battle. White flag out, one lap to go. It's Carrier down the back stretch, still single file all the way around until you get back to the battle against so well with the point leaders. 40 down low, 29 up high, checkered flag in the air. It's going to be Carrier, Bilodeau, Bab, Gahan, and it's going to be the 40 of McKegg by a car length over Trevor Sanborn and Billy Rogers. And that's how they'll run a qualifier number two for the Bill Dodge Auto Group Pro Series. Richard Savory drives car number 21. He's a second generation driver. We've got Ryan Priest out of Kensington, Connecticut, in the number 44, and Tom Abley, also out of Connecticut, in car number 32. John Spence Jr. is the flag man for the True Value Modifieds, rolling thunder down the front straightaway. Jack Bateman's got the low line through that first and second turn. Rookie uh, second-year driver Tom Abley goes around in car number 32. John Spence is trying to wave in the game going, and uh, we're going to go yellow. So the second-year driver Tom Abley in car number 32 out of Norwich, Connecticut, the Connecticut Defenders, Crystal Auto Body Camaro signs Monte Carlo. Our winners to date this year have been Kirk Alexander. He's been a winner at Manadnock and Lee. Hinkley, as I mentioned, the yellow 06 of the Canaan Fair Speedway. Grigas at Waterford, Connecticut. Tony Rickey, who is here tonight, as John waves him out of the turn. The green flag is back in the air. And the ground pounders, rolling thunder, roars into turn number one here at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. Eddie Dockenhausen and the 36-year veteran Jack Damon take the field in the turn number three. Bobby Grigas now gets into it. He gets into the back of uh, Dockenhausen. He lifted the let him correct his racer. And the first two cars roar down the front straightaway into that first turn. Further back of the field, you've got Ryan Priest and Tom Abley going side by side. But they fall into a uh, nose to tail formation through the third and fourth quarter. It's Grigas now coming right up behind the number 48, Dockenhausen. So we got a good three car battle going on up the front of the pack there. Dwight Jarvis, the point leader, runs in fourth spot. Hinkley is in the 0 6. And Richard Savory, second generation driver. His dad, George Savory, a very successful racer throughout New England in his racing career. Savory is in the number 21, a number that adorned the side of George Savory's racers for many, many years. Of course, last year, for many of these guys, it was the first time they'd ever been to the Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. It was a learning process when we made our first uh, trip here to the Ridge last year. But a lot of them are very confident coming in here tonight. Dockenhausen, right in behind uh, Jack Bateman, the Canaan, New Hampshire racer. Presented by JRB Transportation, we are halfway. Six laps down, six laps to go. We're taking the top six out of the qualifying heats here for the True Value Modified Racing Series. The ground pounding modifies. Roar down the back straightaway. Dwight Jarvis is in fourth spot. Hinkley is in fifth. Savory is in that sixth spot in car number 21. Now you're going to battle for the second spot. Grigas looked to the inside of Dockenhausen out here in the front straightaway. And Eddie was able to hold him off going into turn number one. Ryan Priest, the young charger out of Kensington, Connecticut, comes right up behind Richard Savory. The battle rages off for the number two spot as Grigas looked to the inside again on Dackenhausen, and Eddie D was able to shut him out in the turn number one once again. 15-16 on the stopwatch here in the tower for the race leader, Jack Bateman. In the Jack's racing engines, number 17. Give you an indication of how fast these modifieds and their 600 horsepower and, uh, automobiles get around the Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. All righty, we got two laps to go at the strike. 
two to go for Jack Bateman. Eddie Dockenhausen, Bobby Griegas, your top three, Dwight Jarvis, Les Hinkley, Richard Savory. In that sixth and final qualifying spot in this one here, the white flag is going to fly. It is in the air for Bateman. As Ryan Priest comes right up behind, Richard Savory in the Superior Oil, number 21. He elects the low line going into turn number one, and Priest follows him down the back straight away in car number 44. The checkered flag from flagman John Spence for Jack Bateman picking up the win in E number one. Josh Currier in the lineup, too. The green flag is back in the air. And 
we go back to racing in heat number three here at the Ridge for the Crown Pony Modifieds of the True Value Modified Racing Series. They are side by side as they rumble down that back straightaway. The veteran Johnny Bush and Jimmy Dolan, a winner in Lee, USA, last year in the Oktoberfest program. Picked up his first career win with the True Value Mods. He is right now challenging uh, Daley Vonchin for the number two spot as Vonchin filled the hole nicely coming off turn number two, going to the bottom of the back straightaway and moving up into that second spot. Jimmy Kuhn, he's second in the point standings in the modern auto body. Number 72 challenges now for the third spot as that's the fast way around here. The ridge for the bottom fives on the bottom here. Andy Sice watches from the Rockingham boat number 70. Jimmy Dolan forced to work the outside in turn number one, car number 69, he and Q. A couple of Jimmys battling to get out for the number three spot here in heat number three. Again, the top six will make it into the 100 lap event here tonight at the Ridge. Andy Sice right up tight behind Q as they work into turn number one. The veteran Johnny Bush brings that field down to back straight away. Look at the battle going on for the third spot. Andy Sice and Dolan side by side as they work three. On a turn number four, John McKennedy. Is in that number 73, watching it all lying ahead of him as they work into turn number one. Sice and Jimmy Dolan hooked up in a battle down the back straightaway. John Spence is going across the flags out here on the flag stand. We are halfway. 600 horsepower and modifieds. Phil Smith, the noted motorsports journalist, often referred to this division as the men that live by the grace of God and 600 horsepower. You strap into one of these things, you do live by the grace of God. Andy Sice right there with Dolan all over the back side of Jimmy Kill. Those are your top five. Here's McKennedy now in car number 73, trying to get into the dance here as they come on turn number four. Johnny Bush continues to set the pace. Daly Bonchin, Jimmy Kuhn in the third spot, size fourth, and then the number 69, Jimmy Nolan's in fifth spot. That sixth and final hot qualifying spot is the number 73 for Jonathan McKennedy. The 19-year-old charger out of Chelmsford, Massachusetts is in that sixth spot. Here's the two to go sign from the flag stand. Two to go for Johnny Bush. Look at Kuhn right up behind Ivanchin as they work through the first and second turn. A car length separates the two down the back straight away. The white flag is in the air, fans. One more lap to go, and heat number three for the runner of the big guy from Huntington Station, Long Island, New York. Showing the field around the third mile Beach Ridge Motor Speedway and heat number three. In that third spot, it's Kuhn, Sice, Dolan, and uh, the 73 checkers are out. It'll be Bush winning it, and there's your top six right there. Second going to Daly Bonchin, third to Kuhn, fourth to Sice, fifth to Jimmy Dolan, and Jonathan McKennedy will nail down that sixth spot in car number 73. Inside row number three, it's the number three, Jesse Tolman out of Old Orchard Beach. Number 27 starts next for Scott Grant. To the outside of him, the number 11 is Daryl DeWitt. On the side are Stan Jr. Niles, looks the field over. Number 85, Glenn Bradbury will round out the running order as we get set for the start off of turn number four. Green is in the air and we are racing. Jay Moore's right on the start as Darren Day loses time on the outside in the number 37, 85, Glenn Bradbury right there. Those two want the same race line, although the 37 gives it up a little bit. And Bradbury, who started in the Let's see, he started on the outside of row number three, already up into spot number two, with just one lap complete. 37 down the back stretch, rides in third, Daryl DeWitt up to fourth, followed by Scott Grant and the number three for Jesse Tolman. Wildcat division certainly uh, is an accordion-like division some years. There are just so many competitors. Other times that uh, we won't need to run a semi-feature. And, and this season, uh, we've grown back into that. Normally a 15-lap affair in the 14 of Jay Moore's leads it back into turn one. 85, 85 of Bradbury. 37 really loose in the corners. Hanging on to it, though. But look at Jesse Tolman like a rocket ship down the back stretch. Number three passes a couple of cars. Goes after the number 37 round. Jay Moore is up in front, followed by Bradbury. Five laps in 
of this race. With the number three of Jesse Tolman, this time by cross flags are in the air. And Jesse Tolman could be the class of the field tonight from the back of the pack. Tolman pipes up the outside and number three rides to second. 14 of Jay Moore's off of turn number two has led this one since the drop of the green flag, but now he has his fiercest challenge of the night in the name of Jesse Tolman. Tolman side by side for the lead. They'll drag it back to the start finish line. Get the spot to Tolman in turn number one. Three down the back straightaway finally clears out the number 14 single file down the back stretch and from the back to the front from all worst to first, number three, Tolman, off a turn for your leader. Single file pretty much all the way around the racetrack as Jesse Tolman comfortable in the lead and not looking back. I think he's going to take either a spin or something on the number three to prevent him from going to Pepsi Victory Lane tonight. And Jesse Tolman is one of the bubble drivers. He he has he's within the uh, well, distance of getting into the main event with just a, a win in the semi feature. It's not like he had, will have to rattle off uh, three or four straight wins to even be eligible or have enough points to get into the main event. This win should do it for him. Now, obviously, he will not be in the main event for tonight, but come next Saturday night. Yeah, Jesse Tolman will probably be in the main event, depending how the points shake out with the main event tonight. White flag out, one to go. It's all number three. Eighty-five of Brad Berry leads Darren Day and Scott Grant with Daryl DeWitt down the back straightaway. Checkered flag in the air, and it's all number three. A dominating performance, Jesse Tolman. Three-year winner, followed by Jay Morris. And that will finish things off for the Wildcat Semi feature event, the Road Runners. Coming up next. This will be the only time we see the Road Runners tonight. Their feature race, a 25-lap feature race. Extra distance for this division tonight. Will it have a factor in the outcome? Green flag is in the air. Roadrunners are underway. Number 38, Steve Bennett down the back straightaway. Bennett in search of his first career NASCAR night win in the Roadrunners. He has a son that races on Thursday Thunder. His wife raced on Thursday Thunder until she rolled her car over about six or seven times. And once. That kind of did her in for the season. 38 down the back straightaway. Still your leader. Connolly has jumped into second, though. Rocco Rispera to third. Couple of drivers to watch in the back of the pack. It's the 31 of Brackett. Look at the number 47 on the high side going three wide. Tim Caswell. Caswell has easily been the hottest driver in this division for the past six weeks. As a matter of fact, Caswell has rolled off four feature wins in the last month and a half. Wow, and after the True Value Modified Series, <laughs> this is quite a quiet division. It's like, uh, it's like night and day. It's almost like when you walk out of a rock concert. You have that big buzz in your head. You know, you're driving home and the radio's crank all the way up. Then you get in the car the next day, you're like, what was I thinking? Side by side down the back stretch, battle is for second, Paul Lund, and we're looking at three wide for second. Here comes Kelsey Babb on the inside. Almost made it four wide. Timmy Caswell still has thoughts of that, and down to the turn number one, it's Babb in second spot. Kelsey Babb in a car that won the championship last year. Different driver, though. That was Jamie Heath. The 91 runs just outside the top five now. And Kelsey Babb, a power move down the backstretch that last time. Kelsey, the daughter of four-time Pro Series champion Bobby Babb, 
Her brother Bradley runs in the Whiz Kids. And it was her grandpa that started the uh, bad name here. Beach Richard, two-time track champion, Bob Sr., who's here tonight watching his granddaughter possibly take another win. She uh, picked up her first career win a couple of uh, months ago. Pretty early in the season for Kelsey Babb. And the way she's running tonight just might make it back to victory lane. Kelsey Babb won her first race just before Memorial Day and has been solid ever since, but has not been able to break through. It's been uh, the Chip Caswell show the last four or five weeks. And now Kelsey Babb goes to the high side of Steve Bennett. Battle for the lead, turn number three. Silver car on the inside, it's Babb, the third generation driver on the high side, and they give each other plenty of room as they work their way to turn number one. Bennett breaks loose in the rear, gathers it back up, stays out of Babb's way, and down the back straight away, Kelsey Babb Kelsey Babb, 16 years of age and going to the lead in turn number one. Steve Bennett in danger of losing second spot now. Here comes Tim Caswell on the high side. 47, as I mentioned, four wins this season. And they have all come in the last month and a half. Caswell, the most recent feature winner. You saw him start at the back of the pack. That was not a problem for Timmy. We'll see his brother Brian run in the Wildcat main event. 47 is tracking down that though, still plenty of time. Remember, an extra distance race for the road runners tonight. Instead of going their normal 20, they will run a 25 lap feature event. To balance out the fact that we are not running qualifying races for the road runners tonight. 47 and four, they appear to be evenly matched power wise, but what will happen with the hand? Smart race down low, hitting all the marks, running right down on the speed bumps. She will not give up the bottom groove. If Caswell's going to get around, it will have to be up high. And here comes the 47. Turn number three, Caswell can't get to the bumper. You see how rapidly he closed in. Closing's one thing, passing something entirely different. You can close on anybody, but can you pass? Caswell has passed everyone with the exception of Kelsey Babb. Down the back stretch, does get a good run off a of turn two, and Kelsey will hold him in the three. They're coming up on some lap traffic. They'll come up on the lap 99 of Dave Stone. And many times this season, we have seen lap cars wreak havoc with the leaders and certainly make a difference in the outcome of the race. Now, Tim Caswell gets a good run in the turn number three, almost draws it up even. Caswell running in will the 47 use the 99 as the pick. Kelsey Babb wants to get around the 99 before they get to him, but Caswell's right there. And number 47 goes. distance race. Kelsey will have time to get to the back bumper of the 47 of Caswell. Normally, there would be two laps to go. Instead, we have seven. With clear sailing ahead of them, it is down to these two drivers. The 47, the four, long way back to Paul Lund, who's also closing, but I don't think he'll have enough time. Without the aid of a caution flag, don't think Lund will get to the back bumper of either Babb or Caswell. Three wide, turn one, further on back. Good battle, I think that, let's see, that's for fourth. Jamie Heath, number 38 of Steve Bennett and Rocco Rizbera. Fight it out, meanwhile up in front, Kelsey Babb has caught the leader. Don't count out Kelsey Babb. Had this been a normal night, that would have been the last lap, but a final night, sort of overtime for the road runners. Let's see if it makes a difference. 47, four, single file, turn number four.
One of the biggest moments of 2006 in any of the nights we race here, whether it be Car Wars, Thursday Thunder, or NASCAR night, had to be that night, May 20th, a night that uh, Bobby Babb won on, also a night that his daughter won her first major NASCAR night race. She's won a, a number of go-kart races over the years, but this year stepping up into the Road Runners. Falls about two car lengths off the back bumper, this time by two laps to go. Field continues to run, single file. The leader in battle for the lead really has, well, I, I was about to say subsided, but just as that was about to come out of my mouth, and it eventually did. Kelsey Bad close right to the back bumper with Jim Caswell. Got a great run going into turn number three. Can she do anything with it? Can she build up some momentum? Final lap, turn number two where the leaders are at. Caswell searching for his fifth win of the year, and here comes Kelsey Bad. Bad will take us down to the high side. This is her last shot. Checkered flag in the air. Caswell holds it down, and the 47 picks up the win. Kelsey Babb, second, Paul Lunt, third, fourth to Sean Brackett, fifth to the 91 of Jamie Eaton, number seven, Rocco Rispera, Steve Bennett, and Connolly, Dave Stone, one lap down, and the number two of Matt Harmon. Get your 50-50 tickets from our sales center behind the flag stand or from uh, our rovers working or walking up and down the grandstands. Let's go trackside to Pepsi Victory Lane for the first time tonight, where you'll find Mr. Dave Sturgis. Thank you, Andy. Welcome, your Road Runner feature winner, Tim Caswell, your winner. Tim, congratulations and welcome to Pepsi Victory Lane. Thank you. It's, uh, it's been a good season, what can I say? You know, I gotta, first of all, I gotta thank my sponsors. I got plenty of social supplies, MNA used cars. They thank my father, my mother. Been a big help. My brother, uh, pit crew. And you know, I just, I just raced with a good bunch of guys. You know, they're rich and clean. What more can you have? Got a pretty good uh, winning percentage uh, of last seven times out. You've been here uh, your fifth time, your fifth fe feature win tonight. It's all on my tires, you know. I, I got a sponsor to buy me some new tires, and that's where I've been since. Congratulations on Irving Oil Night. Rob is here with the first place presentation. Tim, awesome race tonight. Congratulations to you. Awesome race. I hope everyone's enjoying their night out here. And uh, this one's for you, my friend. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, he picks up his fifth trophy of the year, and your feature winner, Tim Coswell. Then it's the number 90, Richard Randall. Your current point leader is the number 45, Cole Watson. Then the 41, Steve Benacasa, Robert Williams, Mike Rowe, the most recent winner, and Lewis Anderson in the number 81. 35 laps the distance. I don't think this is going to last.
Monkey works through corners number one and two, single file for the top three, and then you go back to the battle for fourth. It's Sean Gilpatrick on the top side of Mike Dearden. Dearden the pole sitter falling back through the running order, and this could spell bad news if they cannot pry him off the bottom groove. Good news, though, for Buddy Minot, David Wilds, Ronnie Corbio, and point leader Cole Watson. The outside line would become the preferred line. Down the back straightaway, Minot sideways, gathers it back up, but will lose a couple of spots, or will he? Andy Ayers, and oh, Minot made contact right in front of David Wilds. Andy Ayers hits the wall. Wilds continues, tough, tough break for the Team Orange, number 29. Meanwhile, down the back straightaway, James Travis, and the number two of Richard Olin will go side by side for the lead. We will stay green. Green racing up in front off a of turn, number two. 17 has led the first five laps of this race, but now Richard Olin jumps into the lead. Here comes the number two. As the sun sets, you can really see the drivers work the steering wheels off of turn four. Olin, what a dogfight. Down the back stretch, a half car length on top of Travis. Line of a kick right there. As they come up on the number 29, David Wilds going down one lap. Tough break for the 29. But Wilds, the long time and solid competitor that he is, stays out of the leader's way. That gives the number two sole possession of the lead in trouble down the back straightaway. Scott Barry backs up in front of everybody. Lewis Anderson involved. Caution is out. Yellow flag flies, and for the most part, the drivers adhere to it. So Rowe very confident, and only seven laps into this race has just broken inside the top ten. Keep an eye on the number four. Scott Berry returns. Off a of turn number four, the number two of Richard Olin will lead into the start-finish line. Green flag is out. Off of turn number two, car number two, your leader, James Travis, and here comes Lava McKick. Do we see three wide for second? Not yet, but give us a lap. Off a of turn two, Lava McKay rolls to spot number two. That is short-lived. James Travis strong on the high side, but the old man being pushed by the orange crush, though 66 wants a piece of the action. Mike Rowe goes three wide. Moving up the middle goes around Brian Caswell. But the number 90 of Richard Randall. Look at those drivers. Packed in like sardines through one and two. While it continues to be the number two and the number 40, look at the battle for fourth on back. Ronnie Corbeil, Sean Gilpatrick, Richard Randall, James Travis, Mike Rowe, Steve Benacasa. Benacasa has come from the back of the pack. Lewis Anderson trying to move up to look at Lou with a three wide move. That's not going to work for Mike Rowe. Rowe around and around. Top break for last week's feature winner. Rowe better get moving. These drivers have not been able to uh, comprehend the check of uh, the caution flag tonight. And this could be very, well, uh, let's see what he gets through. Okay. Well, they're learning. They got it. Good enough. The old touring series did, and we're going to run green flag laps. Sometimes, when you have yellow fever, you can end up running a caution. Well, you can run 37 laps on a caution. Set for a restart, this time off of turn number four. Richard Olin, but look who gets the jump. The old man gets the jump. Lyman McKeg. Through turns, number one and two, the two-time Wildcat champion battles. Car number two for the lead. Richard Olin fights back on the inside as they come down to complete lap number 12, leaning on each other. Still side by side off the corner and the orange crush has moved in. Don't count out Steve Coffin for the victory tonight. Here comes the naughty of Richard Randall, a worthy foe as well. It's Sean Gilpatrick, two by two. 
If you are a fabricator, you are going to have a very busy week if you service the Wildcats. Prepare to order multiple doors. Number two, your leader. Look at the 66, or what used to be the 66. Steve Coffin muscles his way to spot number two. Last year's championship car, driven by Bobby Nitta, who's now moved up into the sports series. The one ride moves to spot number two. Also, keep your eye on the number 90 of Richard Randall down the back straight away. He jumps into third as McKeg loses time on the high side. Here comes Gilpatrick down low. And don't look now, but Lewis Anderson goes three wide. Where did Lewis come from? Lewis, who padded his resume by winning the Demolition Derby in Car Wars last night. Moves up inside the top 10, a solid top 10 run for the 81, closing another 41. Great racing action with the Wildcats, and it's far from over. We are only halfway through this event, and Richard Olin Jr. leads the pack off on turn four. Randall's right there. The last time we saw the number two in victory lane, actually, the last time we saw Richard Olin Jr. in victory lane, it was not with the number two. He was in the number 69 truck. He had just become a father for the first time that week. And Olin, who has taken some time off, now back full force in 2006. And what a moment this must be for him. Leading Richard Randall. Randall trying to pick up some points tonight on Cole Watson as a boy, tough night for Team Orange. 75, Mike Dearden will hit pit road. We gotta go back to, let's see, 51 weeks for a Richard Randall appearance in Pepsi Victory Lane. Go back to August 13th, 2005. The last time we saw the Bill Wright Foundation's number 90, it's been an uncharacteristically long dry spell for the number 90. A driver who once pulled off five feature wins as recently as 2004. Randall in the number 90 is all about consistency this year. And in the season where he won five or four races, he only finished back about sixth or seventh in the boy standings. This year, it's all about top five finishes, not necessarily wins, but Randall wants a win tonight, has a shot at it, and Randall has developed amazing consistency. The number 90, the only driver, one of the only drivers that really have a shot at the championship besides Cole Watson. Comes into this race, 40 points in arrears, can uh, certainly knock a few off that total tonight. Number 90. Randall sits to the high side. Sean Gilpatrick right there, number 66, Steve Coffin. And Lewis Anderson has broken into the top five. Anderson wants the top crew on the 66. Ten laps to go. If you are new to Beach Ridge, we pointed this out earlier, this is a very momentum-based racetrack. If you can get on the outside, and click off a few laps and build up some momentum. It's going to pay off in the long run. But for right now, Richard Randall is struggling, trying to find that momentum. Randall dares to go to the high side, and sometimes it is a dare when your car is not going to work. It could be catastrophic in your, in your finish. As we're starting to see here, we saw that with Lana McKegg earlier. McKegg was on the outside in the lead and now sits in seventh position. Make that eight. And they're three wide, almost going into turn number one. 66 of Steve Coffin, two by two with a 90. The battle is for third, and Richard Owen has shaken off his most, or his stiffest challenge yet from Randall. Let's hit the way back machine for Richard Owen Jr. His first full season in the Wildcats. And you gotta go back. 
I think, until 2003. Yeah, 2003, Labor Day weekend, the last time the number, well, not the number two, he was 69 at the time. But the last time for Richard Owen in Pepsi Victory Lane, he is five laps away from it and five laps away from his first Wildcat win. Sean Gilpatrick, the only driver with a legitimate shot at him, as the race is now for third. Steve Coffin down the back stretch, but look at the battle of the fourth. Here comes Lewis to the inside of Richard Randall. Lewis slides up the racetrack, and here comes Cole Watson, three wide. Also three wide, further on back, Lava McGang trying to regain some ground, goes lower, and Steve Benacasa, he's still in the fight. Sean Gilpatrick at the back bumper of the number two of Richard Olin. Trying to get the two out of shape and pry the inside line away. Gilpatrick knows he probably won't be able to drive around him, but if he can loosen him up into the corners and slide to the low side, he probably can win this race. And with two laps to go, does the Orange Crush have anything to say about this? Here comes Steve Coffin. It's going to get wild with two to go. Richard Olin down the back stretch, trying to pick up his first win since 2003. Sean Gilpatrick going after his first NASCAR night win. And Steve Coffin on the inside. White flag out, and 17 seconds will decide it. 283-66. The calm before the storm. Single file formation down the back stretch. Point leader Cole Watson has come to fourth in Lewis Anderson in fifth. Checkered flag out. It's going to be number two, Richard Owen Jr., your winner. Sean Gilpatrick comes so, so close to picking up his first win. Steve Coffin has a good points tonight, too. The 66 rides in third. Cole Watson missing a door, but still picks up a top five and will pad his points lead even more on the number 90 of Richard Randall. What a night for Watson. Same thing with Lewis Anderson to bounce back. Let's go track side to Dave Sturgis. Ladies and gentlemen, a big beach ridge round of applause for tonight's Wildcat winner. Welcome Richard Owen Jr., your winner. Richard, congratulations and uh, welcome to Victory Lane. Thank you. Nice strong performance out there in the number two Wildcat. Getting your uh, feet wet here in uh, Pepsi Victory Lane for the first time. Yeah, it feels good. It's been, uh, it's been a few years since I've been to Victory Lane. Uh, last time was in the trucks. And uh, we just had a real bad year all year. It seems like we do good and, and something would happen. We get in a wreck or we blow a motor or something. But I had a feeling today and it came, came to me. So I'm real proud about that. I'd like to uh, thank all the pit crew, uh, all my fans that sit in the stands. Thanks for coming out. I want to thank uh, Olin Recycle Olin. Uh, JSR Services, LPW Home Improvements, uh, great sponsors, they all stick by me, and uh, it's good to be here. Congratulations on your first uh, NASCAR night feature win on Irving Oil Night, and Rob is here with, yeah, with a first place presentation. Richard, great race, it's a great night for the races, had some good bump and run out there, congratulations to you. Thank you very much, I gotta say, uh, Thanks a lot for, to my future wife. We're gonna be getting married in a couple weeks. She's been sticking by me through uh, all the time it takes to put it into this. I just wanna tell her I love her, and uh, thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, your Wildcat feature winner, it's Richard Olin Jr., your winner. Gary Casella, number 25.
25, I should point out, that is not the same car that he won with here last year. That is a new car for Casella this year. That is Pinkham's first time in the car here tonight at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. Connecticut driver Ryan Priest, a regular at the Waterford Connecticut Speed Bowl, is running in the second spot in car number 44. Tom Abley is in the number 32, another Connecticut driver. And Carl Fredrickson is in the number 41. Mark andre Cliche is right behind him in the number 8. Again, we're taking the top four to get into the 100-lap event. So you will want to keep an eye on car number 41, car number 8, and Mike Douglas Jr. in car number 23. 15.31 on the stopwatch here with Bruce Elder in the tower for your race leader, David Pinkham, as Ryan Priest attempts to reel him in as they work off turn number four. Mark andre Cliche started out this season with the True Value Modified Racing Series in car number eight. We haven't seen him for several shows because he is a star in Canada. He runs in those late model series events up in Quebec, Canada, and runs very, very well up there. 15.24 is your lap on uh, the number 25 for David Peckham trying to get into this 100 lap race and defend his title here tonight at the Ridge. But uh, Mark andre Cliche coming back to the Tour of Might, and he's trying to get into this show here, catching up to uh, Carl Fredrickson. A lot of these drivers not here ever in their careers. We are halfway out here in the front straightaway as lap number seven is clicked up onto the infield the scoreboard lap counter. Cleish has never been here. Priest has never been here. Courier in the 42. And Buck Yackley in the former uh, Kirk Alexander car in uh, the back end of the field in car number 71. Pinkham, the class of the field in this consolation round. We should point out that Kirk Alexander, you obviously have noted, is not here tonight. He was involved in a heavy, heavy crash last Saturday night at the Knox Speedway. He and Chris Wenzel, another one of our veteran uh, regulars, got together at, at Knox, and their cars were so damaged that it put them on the sidelines, and that's the reason why they're not here tonight. Five laps to go. Five to go for the veteran David Pinkham, the Buxton main driver. Trying to get into the 100-lap race here, Ryan Priest, the young charger from Kensington, Connecticut, holding on to that solid second spot run. In uh, car number 44, Tom Abley, another Connecticut driver, youngster out of Norwich, Connecticut. In the Connecticut Defenders number 32 car, and Carl Fredrickson right now in that hot spot, but pulls away from Marc-Andre Cliche as Mike Douglas Jr. comes right up behind him in turn number three. Next time around, they're gonna get the two to go sign. John Spence shows it to them now, and to David Pinkham as they come off the turn. Two laps to go. Last two times around the Constellation event to establish the starting lineup for tonight's 100 lap race for the True Value Modified Racing Series, the Rolling Thunder, the Ground Pounders. White flag out, one more lap to go. The Roscoe Racing, Gary Casella, number 25 car with David Pinkham from nearby Buxton, Maine, ready to bring it home and uh, score the win in the consolation round. And uh, Pinkham will get into the 100 lap of the night as he scores the win. Priest goes second, third will go to Tom Abley, and the fourth and final qualifying spot will go to Fremont, New Hampshire's Carl Fredrickson in the Speedway Illustrated number 41. 40 of Mike Landry, 8 of Clyde Hennessy, 77 of Sally Girardi, Beaver Norton, last year's champion, way out back. 35 laps the distance. Dana Gagnon will lead him off the start, or off the turn number four to the start finish line. Green flag is out. Gagnon from the inside of the front row, number 34. Morris gets out of shape in turn one, almost drives up into Dave Lampert in the 21. They stay side by side for about 10th spot. Meanwhile, up in front, here comes Frank Ware. Three wide, further on back. Ron Smith in the 57, Jeff Charlotte in the number 13, right there in the 53 is Dan Wink. But the story is up in front. What a power move from the number 20.
but Frank Ware in the number 20. Powered by the outside, or powered by on the outside, and now leads this race. Fifty. A season of frustration for your leader could really turn around tonight. Frank Ware came into this season without any expectations. That's why he did not shop for sponsors. He didn't know if he wanted to run the entire year. Threw a car together and has had mixed results this year. A fast race car, but involved in many incidents, none of his doing. And the number 20 trying to turn things around, leading this race. Seven laps on the scoreboard this time. Dana Gagnon has broken away from Bobby Nato. Long way back to third place, and it's Andy Field, who seems to be permanently etched in fourth tonight, no matter if it's a qualifying race or a feature. Dan Wink down low on Ron Smith. That will be for spot number six. Dan Wink to sixth. Keep an eye on your top point runners. Chris Smith comes into this race four points behind Donnie Morse. Morse in the 75, having a hard time making his way to the front, too. Another driver to watch who's not involved in the point battle, but very fun to watch no matter what he does on the racetrack, whether he's in a point battle or not. The 19, the winner on opening day, that's Brian McClure. He has rocketed from the back of the pack to split the field in half, and we're not even 10 laps into this race. Keep an eye on the number 19 as he makes his way through the field. Inside line, the way to go. 19 moving up nicely. He's bringing Culprit with him. Donnie Culprit had the point lead. One of three drivers who have shared the point lead or have had the point lead in the last five races. Amazing what this division does week in and week out. Robert Emery moving up, Bill Dixon losing time on the outside as the field strings out just a little bit for the first time tonight. It took them 12 laps to do so. 20 of Frank Weir, Dana Gagnon rides in second, long way back to third for Bobby Nato. Andy Field runs in fourth, followed by Scott Dorr. They had some major problems in practice. But as it turns out, a few parts breaking on the race car are exactly what they needed to figure out what was wrong with it. They have struggled the last couple of races. Scott, who has been very consistent this year, has been off the past couple of weeks. They found out why. They were totally missing the setup. There were a few parts that weren't supposed to be there or weren't intentionally there. And they had deviated from the setup but are back to where they were three weeks ago. And it's showing the number 60 rockets to spot number four, tries to get around Andy Field in turn number one. 20, 34, 35, your top three. But it's getting interesting for fourth on back, and actually for third, Scott Dorr is pressuring Bobby Nato. Off of turn number four, 60's right there, and Andy time on the high side. Field in the number 88 being pressured by Dan Wink. Wink gets by now. Russ Morris sets his sights on him. Not sure what happened with Morris in the qualifying race. Whatever it was, it is fixed. 63 moves to spot number five. Actually make that spot six. Trouble turn number two. Nate Levin around. Everybody gets around, but the caution flag is out. Yellow flies, Bobby Nato slows, and uh, Scott Dorr. Frank Ware will bring him up to speed off a of turn number four. Green is in the air, and we are racing. Ware in the number 20 off a of turn number two leads the pack down the back stretch, but he'll have new blood to deal with. Here comes the number 35 from Bobby Nitto. Dan Wink right there, the inside line, the way to go. Three wide, potentially in turn number one. Russ Morris backs out of it. Trouble in the front straight away. Mike, no, that's Brian McClure that goes around. All clear, we stay green. Bobby Nitto trying to take the bottom 
side away from Dana Gagnon. This is the battle for second in turn number four. Things are heating up in the middle stages of this 35 lapper. 20, 35, 34 as Frank Ware looks in his rear view, sees the drivers battling side by side. That's a good sign if you're a fan of Frank Ware. Ware able to choose his line, hit his marks. Nato and the 34 Gagnon, not so lucky on that one. But Gagnon will fight off Bobby Nato. Remember, Nato looking for his first top three of the season. Hard to believe from last year's Wildcat champion. He's had a hard introduction to this division, but has stayed with it. And the number 35 runs in third, right in front of Dan Link. Two former Wildcat champions run third and fourth on the racetrack. Your 2005 champ, your 2004 champ, right ahead of Russ Morris and Mike Landry on the inside. Here comes Landry. The Roofmasters number 40 looks to put the low side or put the move on the low side on Russ Morris. And down the back straight away they go. Frank Ware is off and running. A little over a dozen laps to go. Russ Morris, who was in danger of losing a spot to Mike Landry, was sacrificing the few laps to build up momentum. And we see that now. Oh, his momentum almost taken away by Dan Wink. Wink slid up the racetrack just uh, not even a half a groove. The two made minor contact, but it sent Morse ahead of Wink. So the number 63, keep an eye on him. The race looks like it will be for second with 10 laps to go. Further on back to the pack, some good racing as Chris Smith looks like he might have problems. Saw the hand go up on Chris Smith, although he remains under full power. The number one, number two in the point standings, waving his hand like he was trying to make it to pit road. Let's see what happens. The number one comes across the stripe. Everything seems to be okay, so an anxious moment for that team. Turns out it was uh, it was nothing, and down the back straightaway, he runs just inside the top ten. Meanwhile, up in front, it's Frank Ware. Ware just walking away with this one. Dana Gagnon, Bobby Nato, and look who's found the outside groove to his liking. Russ Morse, arguably one of the hottest drivers in this division the last month and a half. Morse, who picked up three Wildcat wins last year, sold his Wildcat to Mike Rowe. We've seen what Rowe's been able to do with it. Picked up a win last Saturday night. And after the first half of the season and struggling back and forth, Russ Morris has picked up where he's left off in the Wildcats, challenging for wins. Picked up his first win a few weeks ago. And now on the outside of Bobby Nano for spot number three. Give the spot to Morris. This time by. Five laps to go. Five to go for your leader, Frank Ware. Can Russ Morris get to his back bumper? Does he have the time? He'll set up Dana Gagnon in turn number three. Looking to the outside, keep your eye on the red car. The only side-by-side -side racing action inside the top five is the battle for second. And look at this, Russ Morse will have four laps to catch Frank Ware. Can he do it? Off a of turn four, give the spot to Morse, turn one. The TJ Sandwich Shop, number 63, with clear sailing ahead of him. He just might catch the leader. Wow, what a drive for Russell Morris in the number 63. Running out of time. He will get to the back bumper. And Frank Ware looks like he's off a tick, too. 
your top seven drivers. Ladies and gentlemen, his second win in three races. The word was on pit road, once Russ Morse figured out his sports series car, look out. And what a drive. On the outside, you saw him pick him off one by one. Can't say that he could only do it on the inside. He did it both ways. Trackside to Dave Sturgis. Welcome your feature winner, ladies and gentlemen, Russ Morse, your winner. Russ, congratulations and welcome to Victory Lane. Uh, real nice run there coming from the back of the pack and uh, nice inside move towards the end there to take over that first place position. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, the last one was kind of bittersweet, but uh, this one we worked hard. We've been working hard ever since we got racked about a month ago. It was probably the best thing that ever happened to that car. Um, I got to thank a lot of people, um, people that buy me tires and keep me going, Keith Emery. Uh, he owns this car, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Um, TJ Sandwich Shop down Spagel Lake. If you're ever down Spagel Lake, stop at TJ's. Um, Walter Black Carpentry, Maine Telecom Solutions, Deer Pond Hair Salon, Classic Cuts, Custom Cuts and Nails. Um, all the guys that helped me, Andy Jackson, Keith Emery. Uh, Kevin, I don't know his last name, so I call him Big Kev. Um, Walter Black. Uh, just a bunch of people. Jody, my wife, of course. Jesus, she puts up a lot of stuff for me from working on this race car. Um, but uh, we worked hard and we're here tonight. A lot easier when you win it and you can take it home in one piece. Yeah, uh, it's a little banged up, but it's not too bad. Like I said, a month ago, we, we took it home on a, on a car carrier. She was pretty bad off, so it probably, like I said, it was probably the best thing that ever happened to that thing. Congratulations once again on Irving Oil Night as Rob is here with the first place presentation. Russ, absolutely fantastic race. You put on a heck of a show coming from uh, back the field there. Congratulations, and uh, here's your trophy, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for your feature winner, ladies and gentlemen, Russ Morris, your winner. A tribute to the Westboro Speedway. Journey back through time with photos, films, and videos. Experience the cars, the stars, the way it was. Through the 50s to the 80s at the High Bank Quarter Mile Speedway. Plus, a look at the 2001 Westboro Speedway reunion. Order now by calling 888-RACE-VIDEO or 603-679-6796. Now you can own a part of racing history. Stars of the Winston Cup Series compete on a local short track. Not just an exhibition, but real wheel-to-wheel, no-holds-barred racing. Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon, Morgan Shepard, Ernie Irvin, Jeffrey Bodine, Andy Allison, and many more racing pro stocks against local drivers. 
To order your VHS copy in hi-fi stereo sound, call toll-free 888-RACE-VIDEO. That's 888-RACE-VIDEO.